So, uh, this is the first of our uh, Gourmet Classics uh, cooking sessions. Uh, not a chef, uh, don't know what I'm doing, um, but I'm the only person in the family that will do this. So, what we're going to be doing is cooking steak. But, as a starter, we're going to be cooking, because we're here in uh, Monaco. Dad, it's Grimsby. Okay, it's Grimsby. Uh, some monkfish. Uh, so I'm going to cut some monkfish uh, and prawn skewers and then uh, some uh, flat iron and T-bone steaks. Okay, for the starter what we're going to do use is some monkfish and some raw prawns. Now it's important to know that monkfish comes in two forms. Uh, you've got the uh, stargazer which is slightly greyer in complexion and you've also got the English monkfish, North Atlantic Court. We prefer the uh, North Atlantic Court because of its flavour and its texture. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some skewers which have been soaked for about 30 minutes in water to make sure that they don't burn on your barbecue. Take a prawn which has been marinated. What's it been marinated in Ray? Uh, ginger, garlic, chilli and olive oil. Which has been marinated in Ginger, garlic, and chili oil. Chili oil? No. Chili. Fresh chilies. Fresh chilies? Yeah, and olive oil. And olive oil. Tell us, this is the first time I've done this. I promise you that, you know, I did do these all earlier, but now you know I'm a liar. So, what we're going to do, pop these along, one at a time, in the medium, mind him out. There you go, prawn. Uh, a bit of bunk fish, a bit of resistance, it's a nice firm fish and a prawn and eventually a bit slippery with the marinade but there we go okay okay now that is now going to go on our barbecue okay so the nice thing the next thing to do is to put the kebab a nice hot smoking griddle. It's already been pre-oiled, but because we're on uh, a particular diet, we're going to use fry light. There it works. There we go. There you go. We're rocking. Just stop it sticking. Again, the bamboo skewers have been new, uh, have been soaked in um, water for about I don't know 30 minutes or so. Just stop them burning. It also works on a charcoal barbecue, um, but for us, we like this uh, griddle pan. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the steaks. Now what we've done here, we've chosen two types of steaks. They're both at the opposite end of the spectrum, really. Uh, this is the traditional T-bone steak. As you can see, you've got the T. Right, on this side, you've got the fillet steak. On this side, you've got a nice, beautiful uh, sirloin. Uh, on this side, we've now got a what we call a flat iron steak, which is uh, an American cut of steak, but uh, it was a very old British cut of steak called the Butler steak, uh, called the flat iron for obvious, obvious reasons. It's actually cut across the beast, and it's from the fore quarter. The meat I'm presenting to you, and the meat that we use at Gourmet Classics, is all uh, well. It's Trent Valley steak. Well, I can't say enough about it. I think it stacks up against anything else in Britain. Great pasture land, beautifully kept. We know the farmer, uh, and precedence is, is, is everything. You need to know where it's coming from. I know it's always not always possible, but here you've got some cracking steak from a chap uh, on the banks of the River Trent. Great land, feeds them wonderfully on uh, lupin and red clover. Uh, the land has never been used or hasn't been used in the last 25 years uh, with any sort of um, sprays or anything like that. Great quality, well kept, but it's absolutely beautiful. Can't say enough about it. So what we're going to do, uh, we bring them to room temperature. All right, these were frozen products, uh, air blast frozen. They've been brought to room temperature because you know they need to be. You know, the, the worst thing we can do is, is take something that's cold and put it into a hot environment and it's going to tense up. So we don't need that. 
to get a nice tennis day, come to room temperature. <coughs> a lot has been said about uh, whether you should oil the pan or whether you should oil the meat. Me personally, it's down to you personally. I like to oil the steak. Right now, we've got uh, the T bone here, which is going to uh, the boy. A little bit more, too much oil there, but well, maybe not actually. Right, I'm going to whack that on there. That's going to my boy. It's a 17 ounce T bone steak. It's the first time he's tackled one of these little bad boys, but uh, I'm sure he'll cope. Because if he doesn't cope, he won't like me taking the Mickey out of him. So even if it takes them the next three weeks to eat, then that's what I'll be doing. With the flat iron there, <coughs> I'm using a little bit of, uh, well it's actually called fry light, maybe I shouldn't advertise it, but, and that's for one of the girls, uh, Chloe, that's normally on the phones. Alright, so it's uh, less fattening, a little bit of salt, you need to season, always season your beef. Alright, and these guys are ready to go on the griddle pan. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a little, little bit of a look underneath them. Real ginger sort of look. Don't want to mess about with these too much. This one's a very important steak. This is my 15 year old son's first T-bone. He's told me he can eat this. <coughs> well, he Quite honestly. Well, he says I'm going to eat it. Quite honestly, I'm not sure. So, what we need to do is take the tongs, little look underneath. That's the, uh, that's lovely. And over. Look at that. Nice bit of caramelisation. You've got the line. Which, to be perfectly honest, is very, very aesthetic reason. Do the same with the flat iron. A little bit of a press down. The important thing is, leave it. Okay. This doesn't seem as though it's been that, that, <laughs> that long on it, but. However, we use this little trick here, it's a pro, alright, we're going to drop that in there, into the thickest side, oh you can see that, that's 30, uh, it's good for 40 degrees, that is a blue stain, alright, an absolute little belter, and it's also my son's right of passage. Provide me eat it. Well, I'm to get a plate. <coughs> we'll take him off there. We have got some salad on there, obviously. <coughs> um, you know, I think I'm a rabbit. But as you can see, that is a belted piece of steak. Absolutely cracking. And now for our flat iron, which is good to Chloe. Now Chloe's normally on the phone and normally not short of something to say. But on this occasion she's left it to her old man to uh, do a YouTube video. She doesn't mind it. Oh look at that. Yeah, we're coming up on 30, 38 degrees. Right. Now <coughs> Lots of people will tell you that a nice steak should rest, and I totally agree. However, my family won't wait. All right, so when I cut into this, you're going to see that there's, quite honestly, a little bit of what can only be described as juice. Right, but look at that, straight through it, nice and easy. Right, job done. Okay, so we're going to finish off cooking just as you've seen before. A uh, little bit of oil, it's you know, I don't, I don't know what else to call it apart from fry light on these because uh, that's for the girls that are slimming. Obviously, I don't need to because uh, I'm a bronze Adonis, um, as you can see. Right, a little bit of seasoning. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have my tea now. But in the meantime, check out the website www.gourmetclassics.com. Family-run business, cracking food, good and honest. Try it out.
that's it get, get on me hmm. oh, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing now but yeah try it out thank you